about a wedding. There are a lot of thoughts that go on during a wedding. We can't fit all of these thoughts into one wedding naturally, especially not one in Grover's Corners, where weddings are mighty short and plain. I'll be taking the part of the minister in this play. Yes, for a while now, the play gets pretty serious. <coughs> Cheer up, I'm getting married. <laughs> <laughs> Let me catch my breath a minute. Now, Mom, you save Thursday nights. Emily and I are coming over for dinner every Thursday night. You'll see. What you crying for? Come on, we gotta get ready for this. Don't know when I'm seeing such a lovely wedding, but I always try. You don't know. 
wedding. I'm sure they'll be happy. I always say, happiness, that's the great thing. The important thing is to be happy. are getting rare. Farmers are coming into town now in Fords. Everybody locks their house doors at night now. You'd be surprised, though. On the whole, things don't change much around here. But this is certainly an important part of Grover's Corners. It's on a hilltop, a windy hilltop. Lots of sky, lots of clouds, often lots of sun and moon and stars. You come up here on a fine afternoon, you can see range on range of hills. Awful blue they are, up there by Lake Sunapee and Lake Winnipesaukee. You go way up, you can see the White Mountains, and Mount Washington. And of course, our favorite mountain, that Mad Knox, right here. And there, quite a ways down, is Grover's Corners. Beautiful spot, isn't it? Mountain laurel and lilacs. This here is the new part of the cemetery. There's your friend, Mrs. Gibbs and Mr. Stimson, the organist in the Congregational Church, and Mrs. Soames, who enjoyed the wedding so much. Remember? Oh, and a lot of others, and editor Webb's boy, Wallace, whose appendix burst on a boy scouting trip up to Crawford Notch. Yes, an awful lot of sorrow has sort of quieted down up here. People just wild with grief brought their relatives up to this hill. Now, there are some things that we all know. We all know that something's eternal. It ain't houses, it ain't names, it ain't the earth, it ain't even the stars. But we all know in our bones, something is eternal. And that something has to do with human beings. There's something way down deep that's eternal about every human being. You know, the dead don't stay interested in us living people for very long. Gradually, Gradually, they let go hold of the earth, of the ambitions they had, the pleasures they had, of the things they suffer, of the people they love. They get weaned away from the earth. That's the way I put it. Weaned away. Yes, they stay up here, while the earth part of them burns away, burns out. And all that while, they're slowly getting indifferent to what's going on in Rover's Corners. They're waiting, waiting for something they feel is coming, something important and great. Yes, they're waiting for the eternal part in them to come out clear. Well, here are some live people now. There's Joe Sovereign, our undertaker, come to supervise a new made grave. And there's Sam Craig, the Grover's Corners boy, who left town to go out west. Good afternoon, Joe Sovereign. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Let me see now. Do I know you? I'm Sam Craig. Gracious sakes alive, of all the people. I should have known you'd be back for the funeral. You've been away a long time, Sam. Yes, I was out east when I heard of my cousin's death, so I thought I'd combine things a little come see old home. You look well. Yes, yes, can't complain. Very sad, our journey today, Samuel. Yes. Yes, yes. I always say I hate to supervise when a young person is taken. They'll be here in a few minutes now. Why, this is my Aunt Julia. I've forgotten that she... Of course, of course. Yes, Doc Gibbs lost his wife two, three years ago, about this time. And today is another bad blow for him, too. That's my sister Curry's boy, Sam. Sam Craig. 
I'm always uncomfortable and bare around. <laughs> now, I wanted to see my father and my mother. Over there with the craze, Avenue F. He was an organist at church, wasn't he? Drank a lot lately, this evening. Nobody was supposed to know about it. He'd seen a pack of trouble. Took his own life, you know. <laughs> Did he? It's just a couple minutes of music. What does it mean? Joe, what did she die of? Who? My cousin. Oh, didn't you know? Had some trouble bringing a baby into the world. Was her second, though. There's a little boy about four years old. So she'll be there to keep. Yes, there ain't much room among the Gibbses, so they're opening up a whole new Gibbs section over by Avenue B. Well, excuse me now, I see they're coming. Julia? My daughter-in-law. Emily Webb. Well, I declare. She rode up here must have been awfully muddy. What'd she die of, Julia? In childbirth. Childbirth? I've forgotten all about that. Mine wasn't life awful. <laughs> and wonderful? Wonderful, was it? Simon, I remember. I remember Emily's wedding. Wasn't it a lovely wedding? And I remember her reading the class poem at graduation exercises. Emily was one of the brightest girls ever graduated from high school. I called on them at their new farm just before I died. Perfectly beautiful farm. They'd sing a song. Hello. Hello, Emily. Hello, Mrs. Gibbs. Hello, Mother Gibbs. Emily. Hello. It's raining. Yes. They'll be gone soon, dear. Just rest yourself. It seems thousands and thousands of years since I. Here. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Stimson? How do you do, Emily? Mother Gibbs, George and I made that farm into just the best place you ever saw. We thought of you all the time. We wanted to show you the new barn and the great long cement drinking fountain for the stock. We bought it with the money you left us. I did? Don't you remember, Mother Gibbs, the legacy you left us? Why, it was over $350. Yes, yes, Emily. <laughs> it's not the same for George without me. But it's a lovely farm. Live people don't understand, do they? No, dear, not very much. They're sort of shut up in little boxes, aren't they? I feel as though I knew them last a thousand years ago. My boy is spending the day at Mrs. Carter's. Oh, Mrs. Carter, my little boy is spending the day at your house. Is he? Yes, he loves it there. Mother Gibbs, we have a Ford, too. Never gives any trouble. I don't drive, though. Mother Gibbs, when does this feeling go away? Of being one of them. How long does it? Shh, dear. Just wait and be patient. I know. Look, they're finished. They're going. Shh. Look. Father Gibbs is bringing some of my flowers to you. He looks just like George, doesn't he? Mother Gibbs, I never realized before how troubled and how, how in the dark life persons are. Look at him. I loved him so. From morning to night, that's all they are. Trouble. <laughs> Little cooler than it was. I have the rain cooled off a bit. But Mother Gibbs, one can go back. One can go back there again. Into living. I feel it. I know it. Why, just for a moment I was thinking about, about the farm. And just for a minute I was there. 
and my baby was on my lap, plain as day. Yes, Emily, of course you can. I can go and live all those days over again. Why not? All I can say, Emily, is don't. But it's true, isn't it? I can go and live back there again? Yes, some have tried, but they soon come back here. Don't do it, Emily. Emily, don't. It's not what you think it'd be. But I won't live over a sad day. I'll choose a happy one. I'll choose the day that I knew I first loved George. Oh, no, no. Why should that be painful? Because you not only live it, but you want yourself living it. Yes. And you see what they down there can never know. You see the future. You know what's going to happen afterwards. But that is painful? Why? That's not the only reason why you shouldn't do it, Emma. When you've been here longer, you'll see that. Our life here is to forget all that and think only of what is ahead and be ready for what is ahead. When you've been here longer, you'll understand. But Mother Gibbs, how could I ever forget that life? It's all I know. It's all I had. Oh, Emily, it isn't wise. But really, it's a, it isn't. But it's a thing I must know for myself. I'll choose a happy day anyway. No. Choose an unimportant day. Choose the least important day of your life. It will be important enough. Then it can't be since I was married or since the baby was born. I can choose a birthday, can't I? I'll choose my 12th birthday. All right. It's February 11th, 1899, a Tuesday. Do you want any special time of day? Oh, I want the whole day. We'll begin at dawn. You remember, it had been snowing for several days, but it stopped the night before. They had begun clearing the roads. The sun's coming up. Yes, this is 1899, 14 years ago. There's the town I knew as a little girl. And look, there's the old white fence that used to surround our house. I had forgotten it. I loved it so. Are they inside? Yes. Your mother will be coming downstairs in a minute to make breakfast. Will she? And you remember, your father had been away for a couple of days, came back on an early morning train. No. He went back to his college to make a speech in Western New York. Look, there's Howie Newsome. And there's our policeman. But he's dead. He died. Mark, Howie. Oh, hello, Bill. You're a girl again. Yeah, been out rescuing a party down by Polish town tomorrow. Some fella got drunk and lay out in the snowdrifts. Darn near froze to death. There's Joe Cole. Morning, Mr. Wood. Morning, Howie. Morning, Joe. Children, Molly, Emily, time to get up. Mama, I'm here. Oh, how young Mama looks. I never knew Mama was ever that young. You can come and dress for the kitchen fire if you like, but hurry. Good morning, Mr. Newsom. Good morning, Mrs. Wood. Oh, it's cold. Yup, it's headed below by my bar, Miss Webb. Think of it. Keep yourself wrapped up. <laughs> Mom, Bessie. Mama, I can't find my blue hair ribbon anywhere. Just open your eyes, dear. That's all. I laid it out special for you on the dresser there. If it were a snake, it'd bite you. Yes, yes. Good morning, Bill. Good morning, Mr. Webb. You're up, bro. You're back to old college in New York. Is any trouble here? I've been out rest you in a party. Darn your first death out in snowdrifts. It's quite much. Good morning, Mother. How'd it go, Charles? Well, oh, fine, I guess. I told you a few things. Everything all right here? Yes. Can't think of anything that's happened special. Been right cold. Howie Newsom says it's ten below over to his barn. Coffee's ready when you want it. Charles, don't forget, it's Emily's birthday. Did you remember to get her anything? Yes, yes, I've got her something right here. Where's my girl? Where's my birthday girl? Don't interrupt her now, Charles. You can see her at breakfast. She's slow enough as it is. Hurry up, children. It's 7 o'clock. Now I don't want to call you again. I can't bear it. They're so young and beautiful. How did they ever get so old? <laughs> Mama, I'm here. I'm grown up. I love you all. Everything. I can't look at everything hard enough. Can I go in? Good morning, Mama. Well now, dear, a very happy birthday to my girl and many happy returns. There are surprises waiting.
away for you on the kitchen table. Oh, Mom, you shouldn't have. I can't. I can't. But birthday or no birthday, I want you to eat your breakfast good and slow. I want you to grow up to be a good, strong girl. I reckon you can guess who brought the postcard album. I found it on the doorstep when I brought in the milk. George Gibbs. Must have come over in the cold pretty early. Right nice of him. Oh, George, I had forgotten that. Oh, Mama, just look at me for a minute as though you really saw me. Fourteen years have gone by. I'm dead. You're a grandmother. I married George Gibbs, Mama. Wally's dead too, Mama. His appendix burst on a camping trip to Crawford Notch. They felt just terrible about it. Don't you remember? But just for a moment now, we're all together. Just for a moment, let's be happy. Let's look at one another. That and the yellow paper is something I found in the attic among your grandmother's things. And this is from you? It's lovely. It's just what I wanted. It's beautiful. Wally has something for you, too. He made that manual training class, and he's very proud of it. Be sure you make a big fuss over it. Your father has a surprise for you, too. Don't know what it is myself. Here he comes. Where's my girl? Where's my birthday girl? I can't. I can't go on. It goes so fast. We don't have time to look at one another. I didn't realize. So all that was going on and we never noticed. Take me back up the hill to my grave. But first, wait. One more look. Goodbye. Goodbye, world. <laughs> Goodbye, Grover's Corners. And Mama and Papa. Goodbye, the clock's ticking. And my butternut tree. And Mama's sunflowers. And food and coffee. And new iron dresses and hot baths, and sleeping, and waking up. Oh, Earth, you're too wonderful for anyone to realize you. Do any human beings ever realize life while they live it? Every, every minute? No, saints and poets, in your song. <laughs> I'm ready to go back now. Were you happy? No. I should have listened to you. That's all human beings are. Just blind people. Look, it's clearing up. Stars are coming out. Oh, Mr. Stimson, I should have listened to them. Yes. Now you know. Now you know. That's what it was to be alive. To move about in a cloud of ignorance. To go up and down, trampling on the feelings of those, of those about you. To, to spend and waste time as though you had a million years. To live always at the mercy of one self-centered passion or another. Now you know. That's that happy existence you wanted to go back to. Ignorance and blindness. That ain't the whole truth, and you know it, Simon Stimson. <laughs> Emily, look at that star. I forgot its name. My boy Joel was a sailor. Knew them all. He'd sit on the porch evenings and tell them all by name. Yes, sir. Wonderful. A star is mighty good company. Yes. Yes, tis. There's one of them coming. That's funny. <laughs> Ain't no time for him to be here. Goodness sakes. Mother Gibbs, it's George. Shh, dear, just rest yourself. It's George. My boy Joel, who knew the stars? He used to say it took millions of years for that little speck of light to get down to Earth. Don't seem like a body could believe it, but that's what he used to say, millions of years. 
Goodness, that ain't no way to behave. He ought to be home. Mother Gibbs? Yes, Emily? They don't understand, do they? No, dear. They don't understand. Most everybody's asleep in Grover's Corner. Only a few lights on in town. Yes. It's clearing up. The stars are doing their old, old crisscrossing sky. Only this one's straining away. Straining to make something of itself. And the strain's so hard that every 16 hours everybody lies down and gets some rest. It's 11 o'clock in Grover's Corners. Everybody's resting in Grover's Corner. Tomorrow's going to be another day. You get a good rest, too. Good night. <laughs> Thank you.